As promised, in this video, we're going to take a look at only. Only is a really important phrase or word that uh, signifies a conditional, but it doesn't in a funny way. In addition, we're going to take a closer look at if and only if, not both, neither nor, and exclusive or. The last three are the three common phrases that we just want to be able to symbolize when they come up in questions. So what does the statement mean? Only if I see a puppy, then I'm happy. Well, we have a couple options here. Uh, it can either be P arrow Q or Q arrow P, according to the abbreviation scheme provided. So P is I see a puppy, Q is I'm happy. Now, which one do you think it is? So take a second and sort of just pick. Is it P arrow Q? Is it Q arrow P? Only if I see a puppy, then I'm happy. Well, before we actually answer the question, we can look at a different statement, which is the very straightforward one. It just says, if I see a puppy, then I'm happy. Exact same abbreviation scheme, exact same two options. And I hope we all agree that this is obvious. This has to be P arrow Q. So given that this is P arrow Q, I can naturally just ask, what's the difference between a statement that says, if P, then Q, and only if P, then Q? What is the actual difference between these two? So one way to think about the difference is what is allowed and what's not allowed. Can there be other things that result in Q? Can there be other factors, other sort of world events that lead to the result of Q? Well, if I say if P then Q, it certainly can be the case that something else can also lead to Q. And we've seen this in previous examples. So it's got to be the case that other things can result in Q if I say if P then Q. But if I say only if P then Q, it seems like I'm applying some sort of like restriction on what's going on. And what I'm really saying is P is the only factor that can lead to Q. Now, another way of thinking about this is I can ask what case cannot happen? So if I say if P then Q, what can't happen? Well, we know this actually from unit two, from looking at the truth table of the conditional. The only case that is forbidden in a conditional statement is if when the antecedent is true and the consequent is false. But what cannot happen when I say only if P then Q? Well, here, we're not sure which sort of expression to use to symbolize it, so we just need to think about it. And it seems that it's forbidding a singular case where Q would occur, but somehow P didn't. That is impossible if I say only if P then Q. Now, you can sort of see where this is going. We already know that if P then Q symbolizes as P arrow Q. And now what we can see is that only if Q then P naturally symbolizes as Q arrow P. Because if I want to forbid the case that Q and not P together uh, can occur, then that's just the conditional Q arrow P. We can look back at our first question, only if I see a puppy, then I'm happy. And now we know this isn't P arrow Q, because that was the case of just if I see a puppy, then I am happy. This is actually Q arrow P. What does only if mean? Well, if I say only if P then Q, what I'm really saying is that P is necessary for Q. And we know that a necessary condition has to be in the consequent. So you can say that only if really introduces the consequent of a conditional. That is one way of remembering it. Now, symbolizing with only uh, can be done in a variety of different ways. So here's another way of thinking about what only does. And we illustrated this in our first example. You can think that the word only is swapping the antecedent and consequent of a conditional. So the way we would do this is we would actually symbolize without the word only, and we would see what that conditional symbolization is. And then to symbolize with the word only, we actually swap the antecedent and the consequent, because that's what only is sort of doing. Um, of course, the other tip is just to think of the cases that are not possible, and sort of we looked at that as well. So here are some important things to remember when you're symbolizing statements with the word only in it. Now that we know what only means, we can understand what P if and only if Q mean. And so P if and only if Q is really saying two things. It's saying P if Q and P only if Q. Uh, but fortunately, we know how to symbolize both of these things now. Uh, one is Q arrow P and the other is P arrow Q. And of course, and is just the conjunction. But if I have Q arrow P and P arrow Q, you put them together, and of course we get the biconditional, which is P biconditional Q. This is just to sort of tie up some loose ends, because in my last video I said that if and only if is the way to say the biconditional, but I never really explained why, uh, and the key to knowing why 
is knowing what the word only really means. Let's move on then to our three key phrases. And uh, they're key in the sense that they come up a lot. So the first one is not both. So if I say something like, I want not both fries and salad, what do I really mean? Well, let's break this down into possible outcomes. So there's four possible ways of understanding the, uh, not understanding, there's four possible ways of receiving or not receiving fries and salad. Uh, so one possible way is to actually get both of them. So, you know, someone can come and deliver fries and salad to you. Uh, another possible way is you only get fries. Another possible way is you only get salad. And another possible way is you get nothing. Let's pretend that's actually an outcome, a case. So if I say I want not both fries and salad, which of these four is really being captured as the thing I don't want? Which of these four outcomes is the thing that I would be unhappy to receive? Would I be okay receiving nothing? Uh, I want not both fries and salad? Yeah, it seems I would be okay receiving nothing. Would it be okay if I just got exactly one of them? So I just got fries or I just got salad? Yeah, it seems I would be okay with that. There's only one case here, which I'm really opposed to, which is getting both of them at the same time. Why? I don't know. I just have some phobia of green things with fried things at the same time on my plate. It doesn't matter. The point is, if I say I want not both fries and salad, I'm ruling out one case, the combination case. So that really just sort of tells us how to symbolize not both. If I want to symbolize not both P and Q, I say I don't want P and Q. Now another way to symbolize that is to say negation P, disjunction, negation Q. Uh, and we'll actually come to that uh, in, a, in, in a second. So how do I say I want neither fries nor salad? Well, again, here are my possible outcomes. If I want neither fries nor salad, what is sort of the cases that I'm okay with? What are the cases that I'm not okay with? Well, let's go with them in order. If I say I want neither fries nor salad, and you show up to my table and you give me both fries and salad, I think I would be upset. There's something going on there. Uh, there's a miscommunication. I certainly don't want both of them. But if I say I want neither fries nor salad, I also don't just want fries. I also don't just want salad. In fact, what I really mean is I don't want fries and I don't want salad. So an easy way of symbolizing neither P nor Q is to say I don't want fries and I don't want salad, which is not P and not Q. But that can also be expressed as the negation of P or Q where the negation is on the outside. So these are just important things to know. Uh, you might be worried that these things are all the same, they all capture the same logical meaning, but we can easily demonstrate on a truth table that that's not the case. So here are my four sort of uh, uh, presentations, my four uh, sentences that I said captured the meanings of the things we wanted. And let's just push out a truth table really quickly. So the first two, it, it turns out to have the exact same interpretation on the truth table, and the last two have the same as well. And so we can see that not both does capture uh, a false readout when both P and Q are true. And the neither nor options, the only way to have it true is if I don't get fries and I don't get salad. And so that's how we symbolize not both and neither nor, two very important phrases. The last one we're going to look at is the exclusive or example. Now, how do I symbolize? You can fly to Montreal or Ottawa. I hope you all realize the correct symbolization of this is just P or Q, because remember, or is inclusive always in this course. So how do I make this exclusive or? I actually need to explicitly rule out the combined case in my English statement. That's the only way that I can genuinely make this an exclusive or claim. So I would have to say something like, you can fly to Montreal or Ottawa, but not both. And that's really what exclusive or is getting at, but not both. Stating exclusive or explicitly can be done in a variety of ways. So just like the previous example, I could say P or Q, but not both. But I could also say exactly one of P or Q, and I could say only one of P or Q. Now that I have these written out, symbolizing them is reasonably straightforward. If I want to say P or Q, but not both, I just say P or Q but I know is a stylistic variant of the conjunction, and I see that the comma is tied to that but, so then I know that the conjunction must be the main connective, and now I just need to tack on not both, which we now know how to symbolize, 
uh, from the previous slides, and I gave the two options there, the, the top two. I could also just explicitly state the cases of exactly one of P or Q. So I could say the P is true, uh, but the Q is false, or it's the, Q's, uh, it's the case that the P is false and the Q is uh, true. Now I have one last one down there, which is the negation of the biconditional. I'll just take a look at that uh, in a moment. But for now, let's just remember that exclusive or must be invoked explicitly. And once it's explicit, symbolizing it is very straightforward. You're just symbolizing the explicit nature of the statement. Be careful. There is one way of saying something uh, that is a bit misleading. I, I could say one of P or Q. So one of P or Q will happen. But uh, that's actually not so clear in some ways whether or not the joint case is possible. Some people might think that this is an exclusive or, and some people might think it's an inclusive or. Personally, to me, this seems to be inclusive, so you really don't want to say stuff like this. If you want to invoke an exclusive or, you want to be really explicit in your language, so I'd recommend one of the, the first three examples here. The last variant that I had for exclusive or was the negation of the biconditional, and so I just want to sort of explain to you how you would uh, prove to yourself that that is actually capturing the meaning you want. The way you prove it is you actually just use a truth table. So I have P or Q, or, or I have the exclusive or one of the forms in, in the column, and then on the right column I have the negation of the biconditional. But once you start actually filling this out, you will naturally just see, oh yes, that does capture the meaning of exclusive or. So if you prefer, a really nice short way of symbolizing exclusive or is the negation of the biconditional, and you're always welcome to use that form. So we went through these uh, sort of important phrases, but by far the most difficult and the important one that you need to master in this course is the word only. So take some time with the practice questions and really work on that. Coming up next, we're going to look at logical equivalences, which is something that we've actually been experimenting with a lot. Uh, I just haven't really named them that yet. And I'm just going to go over some of the symbolization techniques that we've already been using and just lay them out for you to help you do some of the more complicated questions.